Hey Virgo, this is Alicia with Twisted Tarot, here to do your uh, February 2019 Twin Flame Tarot reading. Thank you everyone who already likes, shares, subscribes, comments on my channel. You guys are awesome, amazing. Um, you've shown so much love and support for me. Thank you so much. Um, it's, it's so, so fun what I do. And you guys, um, I mean it's hard, but you guys make it um, amazing. And I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. It's really awesome. Uh, the love that you guys have shown my channel. I'm so new and um, it has just blossomed. I think we only we almost have 600 subscribers. So yay. Thank you guys um, So uh, I am for those of you who are new to my channel. Welcome. I am an intuitive reader So what that means is if you see a tarot card and I say something different from the traditional tarot or the meaning of the card as you know it uh I'm picking up intuitive messages that are coming from the card, uh, clairsentience, clairaudience, you name it. So um, sometimes they override the traditional tarot meaning um, or they are telling me something about that card that's not the same as the traditional tarot. So uh, keep that in mind. Also, every reader is different. They see cards differently. They interpret cards differently and um, we learn them differently. So that's something else. So keep that in mind. It is general. So. Take what resonates, leave the rest. Uh, some of the messages may be for you. None of the messages may, may be for you. It may be for a totally different Virgo. So, um, and it, I'm pulling in a lot of messages from the collective. So it's gonna be, you know, it may all resonate with you and that's awesome. That I hope that happens for a lot of you. But uh, with a personal reading is how you're gonna get uh, exactly a, a specific message for you. So if it doesn't resonate at all or you want something more personal, you can click on the link in the description box below and that will take you to my website for all my rates and information about me and you can book a private reading. Um, what else? I think that's pretty much it. All right, so these are astrological cards um, and I take two. Let me clear out the energy first and then we will get into your reading. So if you're wearing headphones, uh, you might want to take those off and um, I'm going to chime my chime and we'll get into it. That wasn't very good. Let me try again. Great. Okay. All right. So these are astrological cards. Sorry, I got a little bit ahead of myself. Uh, what that means is um, they're going to be uh, symbol symbols that may come out for your twin, um, for who you're dealing with for your twin. If your twin sign does not come out, it doesn't mean this reading is not for you. It just means that it could be more relevant for the signs that do come out. Uh, but it is general, you know, it's for the collective, so keep that in mind. Um, and I don't really try and get too hung up on the signs. I will say them. If I forget to say a sign, I'm so sorry. I, I get going on my groove, and that does happen. So, And for most of you that do know tarot, you'll know what those signs are, you know, from other readers and things like that, or you can look that up if I forget. So I'm super sorry that does happen. But let's see who you could be dealing with. Who could Virgo be dealing with for their twin? Oh, right away. Taurus. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Who's Virgo's twin? Who's Virgo's twin? They could be dealing with. I want to come out. Who's Virgo's twin? Who's Virgo's twin? Who is Virgo's twin? Like maybe some stiff competition here, guys. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, okay. We'll take both of them. We have Libra or Sagittarius. Okay, so we have Taurus, Libra, or Sagittarius. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. All right, mutual energy between you and your twin is the three of wands reversed. Okay, so normally this is 
uh, waiting for your ships to come in or uh, figuring out what direction you want to go in, kind of looking towards the future, figuring out what kind of um, expansion in um, mat any matter. It could be love, it could be work, it could be um, just a friendship, it could be family, it could just be kind of just normally this guy is like standing there and um, holding one of the wands and looking out over the water and kind of deciding where where he or she wants to go. I guess the man is in the card, but it could be male or female here. Uh, it doesn't have to be that, but that's how it's depicted in the traditional tarot. So um, normally it's waiting for the ships to come in. Like you put out some communication and you're waiting for that. This is possibly the ships, um, maybe nothing came back. Maybe um, this connection, um, someone sent out a message and they never got a response. Um, it could be that <clears throat> Excuse me, I have such bad allergies right now. It's raining outside and it's awful, so I'm sorry, guys. Um, what else? I feel like it's just a, it's just someone's kind of given up possibly on this connection or just given up waiting. So it's um, maybe not being able to see things clearly, too. Uh, for some reason, I'm getting that. So it's like um, interesting. Okay, and we'll clarify all the tarot cards at the end, but that's just some of the relevant energies between the two of y'all. All right, first card for you, Virgo, is the Collaborator, and it is symbolized by the moon. Could be dealing with the Pisces. I co-create to create. Okay, uh, some of the words that are, are def defined by the Collaborator are cooperative, receptive, connective, supportive, curious, empathetic, responsible, insightful, accepting, inclusive, reliable, and co-creative. So uh, could be humanitarian. Um, here we have all these hands and we have the globe. So it could be someone who, um, I'm hearing Red Cross, I'm hearing um, uh, fundraising, uh, volunteering, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, could also be working for a company that is very eco-friendly or they do something that has to do with the ecosystem possibly. For some of you it's also a creative type of card it's also wanting to work together or working well with others um, and these people may be all around the globe so this may be one company that's located um, and has locations all throughout un the United States and in um, other countries is what I'm feeling here too so it's very international feeling so for some of you Virgos that are watching you could also uh, be uh, moving to uh, somewhere outside of the US um, and doing work there um, or taking a trip there and doing some of your work um, in that uh, in that in the in outside of the US so or it could be inside and out so you may be um, I don't know if they call that transnational but um, I could be wrong with that word but going back and forth so interesting and it's very collaborative energy here it's like having to work with different people of different cultures of uh, different nationalities uh, different religions things like that but also uh, whatever you're doing is it's also sustainability so you may be <clears throat> excuse me for some of you going to conferences and speaking uh, about uh, about new products that have to do with uh, or new ways to become eco-friendly uh, and for sustainability so it could be uh, what do they call it when you composting and things like that so and recycling and ways to recycle and and things like that so that's really interesting energy you guys okay next card we have is dream sanctuary attend to the simple things okay so your dreams may be your sanctuary for some of you um, it says attend to simple things so it may be that <clears throat> you have big dreams but they want you to kind of uh, tend to the everyday everyday things currently or that's all you can give and maybe your your escape is in this dream sanctuary so it's like your mundane life is like all you know in the 3d but then when you go to sleep you're in that 5d and you get to explore different realms or different parts of yourself or uh, you're dreaming big for things about what you want to do uh, or getting insight in your dreams. That's really beautiful. Let's see what that says. So this is from the hero's journey It's a dream oracle. So it's kind of about dreaming um, And symbols from dreams, but I think it's all relevant because when you're so connected uh, through the twin flame journey uh, <coughs> Excuse me and as you become more enlightened and ascend higher then you start uh, then you start going into uh, further realm the realm like the mystical realm 
um, and into the higher realms. Beautiful. Okay, let's see what this means. Oh my goodness, you guys, I'm so sorry. Ugh, okay, your sleep zone is your dream sanctuary, and yet you take it with you wherever you may roam. In fact, you are a dream sanctuary. You are a dreamer, and your presence provides a sanctuary for you and everyone who approaches you on the path of life. Your dream zone is the orbit in which you spin, dance, live, and love. Attend to the simple things to ensure harmonious flow in all your relationships, and you will sleep and awaken each day with a smile on your lips. Take inventory of anyone you need to forgive or to whom you owe an amends. Identify the attachments and behaviors you'd be better off dropping and release them. Resolve clutter in your bedroom, around your nightstand, at home, and at work. Make room for success, happiness, prosperity, and brilliant ideas to swoop in and embrace you unencumbered. Wow, okay, so that's a lot of information. So, like I said, um, your dreams are your sanctuary, but it feels like you may be taking them out into, like you may be dreaming about them at night, you may be taking them out into the into the 3D world and making them happen. Um, and they're saying to make room for those things. So to clean up the clutter, <clears throat> excuse me, make your bedroom a sanctuary. So if it's a place that you lay your head down at night and it is, it's too much stuff going on and too many things and electronics and things like that, it's telling you to simplify that and to get it into more of a place where it's uh, like candles and Himalayan salt lamps and uh, uh, using incense and sage and things like that and making and and the way you decorate it as well may need like a, just to make it so that when you do walk into your room and you do go into this dream world um your full dream world at night um that your soul is able to rest and the more you're able to do that they're saying that you can take better relationship care of your relationships in the external world um by using that same by using that same feeling that you have when you wake up from dreams that's so beautiful and so relaxed and calm and and flows very well so it's also talking about relationships that if there's anything that's you need to make amends for it's time to do so now especially when you don't know you know we don't have all the time on this earth and we all know that now for those of us that believe in reincarnation we may have many lives that we can live but it doesn't always mean that we're going to meet or interact with the same people or even know the things we knew from our previous lives and take them with us not necessarily may not be fully conscious of that when we um, I believe in reincarnation so that's something I I look at but they also want you to um, so identify attachments and behaviors you'd be better off dropping and release them so anything that is no longer serving you so if you're a smoker you might want to quit smoking if you're um, biting your nails you might want to there's this deck nail polish you could put on that you could stop biting your nails with. So things like that. So any bad habits or any attachments that no longer serve your highest good, those need to go is what Spirit's saying. So, wow. There's a lot of messages in that card. Next card we have is white. Source, divinity, and enlightenment. Okay. So uh, you may be drawn to wear white or you, or you, they're telling you to kind of, if you're feeling like there's, uh, like you're depressed or, like you're you're saddened by something it's they're showing you that, that there is enlightenment and sources all around you and they're kind of guiding you in the correct direction here through your dreams and things like that and also it's like a protective light around you so people may be drawn to this light of yours that you're showing and that when you show up to a business dinner or whatever that people can see that you're glowing and the more that you take care of your relationships and release some of the things that no longer serve you and declutter, you're making more space for source. You're making more space for your enlightenment and um, source is taking care of that. And they're also, people see that around you, there may be a white light around you. People may say, oh my gosh, you're glowing. Like, and that's why, that's why you're very, you're very connected. You're very tapped in, okay? And maybe very tapped into your twin right now too as well. And that enlightenment and that source is very open between the two of you. And you may see it as a white light between you and your twin or you may see a white light around people. And maybe that's how they show you what things are beautiful for you. If you see auras, they can show you what things are good for you around you just by that white light. And it may have even a tinge of pink or purple in it because we see that a little bit here. Next card we have is forgiveness. Yeah, it's talking about forgiveness. So you may have to forgive yourself 
um, as well as others. So this is a big deal when we are on a twin flame journey. Those of those people around us that cause us any type of hurt um, or we have hurt them, um, we need to tap into this and it will help us move forward on this journey. And it doesn't mean what the person said or did or what we said or did was right or okay, but we don't even have to tell that person. We can just let it out into the universe. We can think it, we can speak it, we can say, I forgive you for saying hurtful things, or I forgive you for hurting my feelings, or I forgive you for your actions and whatever those were. Um, and it's also forgiving yourself. I feel like a lot of you may be having a hard time forgiving yourself for something you have done uh, in this connection or just in general. So it's it's living in your truth, um, but also, <clears throat> also not beating yourself up over this and releasing yourself from this pain. Say, I, f I forgive you for, you know, whatever it was and, and releasing that out into the universe. Picture it kind of like, I always think of like negativity that flows through me, just kind of like going like black, um, like a black watercolor, just like streaming out of me. And going down the drain or going out up into the universe and turning into white light so it's just this this ability to forgive is really really important on this journey maybe you maybe your twin it could be anybody next card we have is the ace of swords so this is normally some type of clarity but when it's reversed it's, it could be possible confusion it could be lies it could be you need to forgive your twin or yourself or someone else for lying and that may be what you're trying to figure out how to do, how to release this. And for some of you, it's this, you're, you're kind of in your head about it. And you're kind of wondering like, okay, how, how do I, how do I get to the bottom of this? How do I figure out what the truth is so that I can figure out like what I'm forgiving or how I need to forgive this or what the process is for this? I also see birds here. I don't see them on the card, but I also see white birds. I don't know why, but like doves may be relevant to this. Like you may... Um, you may have to forgive something to do with a marriage for some reason that's just coming through. Um, I don't know if it was, um, uh, whose marriage it was, but you may have to forgive yourself about something in a marriage. So that's exactly what I'm feeling here. And it's also this ability to go within. So this person here, if it was upright, has seen the truth, their clarity is clear. They speak with clarity. They give the truth. They're able to see their own truth. And here it's like, that may be what you're struggling with. It may be this forgiveness. It may be somebody lied or somebody was harsh with their words uh, or you have to be harsh with your words and then you'll have to forgive yourself after being, after being in, that, um, in, that, in that mentality and in that behavior. Next card we have is Beryl. You feel something is lacking in your life, perhaps love, money, or goals. Yeah, that may be that confusion here about what your, what your truth is or what... You're searching for, for some of you, you're searching for something specific and you know that it's out there, but you're not sure what it is. Like you feel that there's something possibly missing. Like it said, whether love or money or goals or a life purpose, or it's just like you're still, there's still a piece missing possibly. And you're trying to figure that out. And that could definitely be why this Ace of Swords is reversed. Twin flame message you have for your twin. <laughs> Something is still missing for me and I'm trying to figure out what that is. That's exactly what I just said. Yeah, something is missing and I'm trying to figure out what it is. It could be forgiveness. That could be what Spirit's saying. That's what's missing. But for some of you, it feels not just internal. It also feels external. Like you're searching out in the world for it. All right. The Visionary, ruled by Jupiter. Jupiter. The world is filled with possibilities. Okay, so it symbolizes um, someone who's inventive, expansive, wise, insightful, enthusiastic, curious, courageous, philanthropic, imaginative, knowledgeable, conceptual, inspired, idealistic, benevolent, and humble. Okay, so I think the visionary, I think this is what you envision for yourself um, for now. And this may be what you're looking out and trying to figure out. Here we have somebody still trying to figure out which direction they want to go in, um, where they want to go. Their ships may not have come in the way they wanted or something didn't work out the way they wanted and they put out something and then they were just waiting and then it was like nothing came in. 
And maybe this is what this what you're doing now is you're kind of looking out into the horizon or taking some time to kind of vis visualize what your next step is and what your goals and, and where you want to go from here. And so I'm feeling like this is more you and expansive. Exactly. This is talking about expansion here um, when we talk about the three of wands, period. So um, so you may be trying to figure out, again, your path, where you fit in this world. Uh, what you want to do with your life still. Maybe there's something that, again, that's missing. And you're trying to figure out what, what to do. Interesting. Next card we have is flip it upside down and question your beliefs. Okay. So it could be that your beliefs are holding you back um, from doing what you want to do. So it could be religious. It could just be, it, it doesn't have to be. It could be, you know, spirit spirituality. It could be um, the right thing to do. You feel like it. You feel like maybe you're doing something the right way, but maybe it doesn't turn out correctly because of some unseen issue that you just didn't know was there or you weren't prepared for. But they're saying to to flip it upside down and try and see things from someone else's perspective, possibly, or things more objectively than just how you see them or how you see the world. So it may be that the reason that you're missing something or, or trying to find your direction here is because you only see it from your perspective and not someone else's. So if you come up with, if you're having a conversation and someone's like, oh my gosh, you would be so good at that. And you're like, no, I wouldn't. Like, that doesn't sound like me at all. It may be that people see you in a different light than you see yourself and they see your potential of things that you could do that you definitely could and it's almost like oh you know stopping and seeing them from from someone else's or seeing from someone else's eyes and questioning your beliefs about things and seeing if they hold up to like an ontological argument things like that so let's see what this card um i think we got this in one of the other readings and if i'm not if i'm not mistaken that's exactly what that means okay What's true in the ordinary world is flipped on its head in the extraordinary world of dreams and the heroic life of magic and miracles. In ordinary life, it's instinctual to run from things that scare you, but when you face the f those fears in a dream, you increase your personal power. In dreams, the tragedy of fire, flood, and destruction can symbolize rapid change and new birth. If you get stuck in black and white thinking, all you have to do is flip yourself upside down, literally or figuratively to see the world from a dream's perspective. When the sky becomes the ground and the ground becomes the sky, you realize you have the freedom and the ability to flip reality on its head. No matter how rigid the belief or experience, it's just waiting for you to turn it around. It's all his fault becomes it's all my responsibility, and she doesn't love me transforms into I am loved more than I could ever perceive. Okay, so it may be that, again, it's this black and white thinking that possibly could be causing some type of blocked energy so it's almost like seeing that seeing things from maybe the gray perspective and not just so black and white might help uh, you open your mind to more possibilities then things are not always just so black and white everything's not always black and white um, and also to um, you have it says you have the freedom and the ability to flip reality on its head so maybe seeing things from a dream perspective so if you dream about fire, flood, or destruction, it can symbolize new change and new birth. Um, and that, of course, it is instinctual for all of us to run from things, but that we need to face them. And if you're not able to face them in the 3D, you can still face them in the 5D. And you may be able to have to face yourself. Maybe some of your ways and your thinking that you have to face yourself, it may also be your twin. Because, again, if we're saying things like, she doesn't love me, she doesn't care, um... Uh, it's all their fault, which I get comments about that, like, oh, well, it's all my twin's fault. No, that's not true. Like, honestly, we all, we all play a part in relationships, whether we like it or not. And, uh, we have to look at our behaviors as well. So if we keep saying to others, oh my gosh, like this person, or I always lose friends this way, or I always end up here, or why, why do you always end up here? What about your behavior? You can't put it on a group of people outside of you and express that it's all their fault and none of yours when obviously your behaviors are actually saying the opposite. Because if you actually listen to that sentence that I just said, you would know that 
in all psychology and anybody who has a degree like I do, you would know that that, that that projection is actually needing to be addressed in the person who's saying that. Oh, everybody does this to me. Oh, I'm always the victim. Oh, this always happens. No, look at yourself. Why does that always happen? Why do these, the, these things still keep occurring? And flip it upside down. Question your beliefs about it's everybody else's fault and it's not mine because that's faulty thinking. That's narcissist. That's narcissism. So, not narcissist. <laughs> okay. All right, purple. Yeah, we kind of have that here with that white card. But yeah, third eye and clairvoyance. So your third eye may be wide open and you may be getting messages and you may be very clairvoyant at this time. Like you may be seeing things in the future. You may be seeing what your path will be at some point, especially if you flip it up upside down. Um, you also may be finding this in your dreams. You may also be able to see this around you. So if you're drawn to the color, color purple, it's my favorite color. So if you're drawn to this color or you see it specifically on like a sign, like a business sign or of some of somewhere that you're at where you might eat, okay, that's your path. Um, again, with the white as well. So pay attention. Three is relevant. This is not necessarily a three. I think this is like a Hinduism, but a symbol of Hinduism, but still. It's that energy here that I'm feeling here. You have some type of seven, eight, nine, eight. Okay, so nine and eights. Okay, so spirituality definitely. And then um, something to acknowledge in yourself. But again, you'll be seeing, you'll be seeing patterns uh, and symbols for a lot of you. And of course, on the Twin Flame journey, we know that that's normal. Um, and whatever symbols and numbers you're seeing, if it's 333, three, three, I would look that up. I'm not 100% aware what that is that one means, but um, if that's the case. And we have return. Okay, so you may wanna to return to your twin um, or they may wanna to return to you, but it requires forgiveness in order for you to be able to do that. Either you to go to them or them to come to you. Interesting. And you may be feeling like they're gonna return. Like you may be feeling this, you may be seeing it in your third eye, you may be you may literally be like, oh my gosh, I know this person's coming back to me. And you may be clairvoyant about it and seeing things that way. Okay. We have the seven of wands reversed. Yeah, because um, again, normally this is like <clears throat> what I feel for this card when it's upright is uh, someone who's adamant about their opinions and I'm right and everybody else is wrong and um, or I'm standing up for my beliefs. It can be any of those things. And it's like almost like a wall against others. Sometimes it's for good reasons. Sometimes it's for not so good reasons. Sometimes we put up walls just to protect ourselves, but we really don't need to. Or we could uh, take a chance and kind of let them down a little bit. Um, it's always about vulnerability, though. It's how vulnerable you want to be, how comfortable you can be letting down those walls. This means you're starting to do that. So you're starting to let down your walls and maybe let your twin back in. Possibly. So for some of you, it's like letting down this wall and you've no longer kind of have this, um, this stance of I'm right, you're wrong. You did everything wrong. I'm, I'm perfectly fine and everything's fine possibly for some of you, but it could definitely be this ability to kind of be vulnerable and let down your guard. And also when people are speaking about about your situation or giving you opinions, you're actually taking them into account, listening uh, with the intentions of actually hearing what someone has to say instead of being possibly defensive and uh, with the wall up, you know, that type of energy. So interesting. All right. And we have table, hard work ahead. So something is we're gonna require a lot of hard work and it may be, you know, working on yourself here right here in order for your twin to return. Working on forgiveness may be the hard work. Uh, figuring out where you wanna go from here. Uh, this expansion type of card here with the three of wands reverse, trying to figure out what, what to do next possibly. So that's interesting. Twin flame message your twin, you have for your twin is, excuse me, I still love you. Mm, that's beautiful. Of course, we see that here, you still love them. Yeah, and it may be this hard work is ahead to to let them in, to be vulnerable to them, to acknowledge. It's also work on yourself. It's acknowledging possibly your beliefs, questioning your beliefs. Next card we have is the Advocate. It's ruled by Saturn. 
I align, align with the greater good for all. Yeah. All right, so this is exactly what I felt for that first card. So it almost uh, reaffirms uh, what I felt for the collaborator. So some of the words that uh, designate what the advocate could be would be humanitarian, resourceful, integrous, idealistic, resilient, outspoken, opinionated, rebellious, a champion, supportive, compassionate, democratic, passionate, driven, and devoted. Okay, so for a lot of you, that's exactly who you are. And it's because you have to stick up for others. It's because you're a humanitarian, because you know that the good you're doing is going to bleed over into many other facets in, in this world. And that uh, some of your ideas that have become... Um, that have actually cr you've created into the physical world at this time are manifesting and you can see the good that they're doing for others. And that is so beautiful, you guys. I'm so proud of that. That's awesome. Exactly. And you're resourceful. Um, you're outspoken and opinionated. You know, obviously we're talking about uh, air signs. Um, oh, wait. Sorry. <laughs> we're talking about um, someone who could be outspoken. We got Libra here. Um, so, so yeah, we are talking about air science with an outspoken, opinionated, rebellious. But I also feel like at times when I when I am with Virgos that um, they are very much, they can be very much like that. And um, so it's you're advocating for something as well. So it could also be for someone. So you may have a friend here that you know you've taken on, and you're like, no, you know, like to everyone else, you're like, no, this is my friend. I love her. I care about her. She's a good friend. So for some of you, you've taken on that energy or he or she is, a, is you're, you're sticking up for yourself and someone else in a relationship or in a friendship. Uh, and also this is widespread. This is global. This is possibly like your work that you do as well. That's beautiful. All right. Oh, this is pretty. You guys have a lot of purple here and I know that I know I should know exactly what this is. One of the other um, one of the other readers or subscribers commented on here and uh, expressed what purple meant, but I know it has some significance, especially for the twin flame journey. So I would look that up, y'all, because we have another purple card and it is Knights of the Round Table. Let their love lift you higher. Yeah, that's that's magical. So I feel like your connection with your twin lifts you higher and higher, especially if you are in union with them or you're in contact with them. So when you're with them, this is exactly how it was when I was with my twin. Uh, your energy just goes through the roof. Like you could, like, it's almost like, why sleep? Why? We don't need to sleep. Like, what's the point of sleep? Like, your connection is just so, it's just so beautiful. Look at this white light here. Well, look at that. That's so amazing. Like, it just has this ability to just raise you up and you feel like you could do anything be anyone and conquer anything especially with these knights at the round table oh wow that's a beautiful card oh my wow you guys i've never pulled that card yet envision the people you most admire now and throughout history seated at a round table with you and your life as their sole focus allow your personal knights of the round table to offer guidance on your current circumstance goals and aspirations Lean on their strength, knowing it is a sign of courage, not weakness, to be buoyed, buoyed by visible and invisible ones who love you. Feel the unique way they infuse you with a direct transmission of wisdom from on high. Marinate in their individual and collective brilliance. Allow yourself to feel, sense, and see genius, gently yet powerfully wrapping itself around you, lifting you higher than you could ever do on your own. Wow. So dreams of a guide, life coach, guru, guru, or leader of any kind signify that you're connecting with the way shore within you. Everyone in your dreams is you, so dreaming of a guide brings a direct infusion of insight, clarity, and wisdom that is more powerful than any external source could provide. Honor this dream by taking concrete action in the waking world. Your dream guide comes to inspire and assist you on your hero's journey. Yeah, so it's almost like you're being asked to account for uh, your actions and uh, your life and your goals and your aspirations like at this table. So exactly, they're asking you to do exactly that. So if you connect with the Knights of the Round Table or any type of figures throughout history, 
think about that. And you can int- you can ha- set an intention before you fall asleep to dream about those type of things. If you've already dreamt about this, this is already telling you that you have already started to do the work and they've already helped you. And you're helping yourself connect with spirit and connect with those uh, that have passed over that are that are so knowledgeable and have so much wisdom, including yourself at this table. So if you haven't already, imagine that. Imagine that these knights are at the round table or these um, individuals in history, and what would they say? If you presented your life to them, how would they how would they critique it? What feedback would you receive? And really work in that energy and see what you can do to improve that, and it will help you with all of your, your current, the current, issues that you're thinking about with your place in the world and with life and with your work you want to do and where you want to go from here and the type of person that you want to be so they can help you with that that's really beautiful you guys all right we have fire okay so you may have fire in your chart maybe dealing with a fire sign we do have sagittarius here so um what i'm feeling from this card uh is that it's again it's this purification they talk about it's um, you're passionate about something or you're going to find what your passion is or something that you're doing and maybe it's your twin in the connection you guys have. It just has this overwhelming feeling of passion and fire and spark. and um, But it also talks about purification and transmutation here. So it's also about purifying your yourself, your emotions, your body, uh, your mind, um, and transforming that into something that is... Um, healthy and uh will raise your vibration and so uh definitely that energy here and they talked about that in one of the cards i think it was the flip it upside down like if you dream about fire um it's it's destruction but there's a purpose to it so it could also be that some of the things that no longer serve you you can even visualize that they're going up in flames not actually burning them i mean you can if you want to if it's you know safe and all that stuff but um it's not going to harm anybody, but, and you could do a ritual like that too. So that's really beautiful. Next energy we have is pause. Okay. Okay. So there may be a pause. Um, currently let's see what that relates to. Looks like this pause, um, may be because of the forgiveness and the return card right in front of it. Um, well, it actually goes like this in the reading, but it could possibly be that until forgiveness is given this return even if somebody returns there may be like some type of pause so something may just kind of be uh not go not move forward even if somebody returns for some reason or another so let's see exactly what that could be the star okay so the pause is possibly even if somebody returns there's still healing that has to be done in this connection there's still there's still um this it could be dealing with Aquarius. This is also, um, what I'm feeling for this is also, it may be a pause in your dreams. Like it may be a pause for you to figure out what your dreams are or what direction you want to go in. And so that may be on pause. And you may put this on pause, your twin flame connection, even if somebody returns because you're still trying to figure out something out about yourself, something out about your situation, something out about who you want to be, who you are. And with the star reverse, it's almost like, a lot of you are wishing and hoping and you're not sure that that this that this is going to happen like maybe for your twins going to return like maybe you just don't have a lot of faith in that or maybe there's a reason why um even if they return that you're still hesitant to move forward because this energy is still here talking about healing it's still here talking about it's still wishing upon a star especially if it's upright but when it's not, it's this doubt. I feel like there's doubt here. There's doubt about this either connection or there's there's something that can't come to fruition yet without healing is what I'm feeling here. And it could very well be just forgiveness. And we have Jug, lighthearted, carefree time. Yeah, so it just may be... Um, this energy that you're in that you just may want to be taking care of yourself. You may want to be doing your own thing. You may just be, um, not wanting to have some type of deep connection, um, or your twin and you may not be ready for your twin because you're just trying to go have some lighthearted, carefree fun possibly. Um, 
And there, I think maybe it's like, maybe stop focusing on so much on your, on your wishing for this connection. If that's what this card means on that one part of it, um, just taking, just be lighthearted and carefree and that will raise your vibration as well. It will also help your twin. So whatever energy you're in, they'll be in that as well. Like you, you can help them if they're going through a rough time and they need healing, but you can do this like in a lighthearted, carefree way. And it may be that you want to spend your time doing, you know, things that you used to do when you were a child. Um, and there's some type of pause in the connection while you figure some things out while you take care of um, healing forgiveness uh, and figuring out where your path is all right so the next message you have for your twins i feel badly for the way that i treated you you didn't deserve that yeah so that could be why you need to forgive yourself okay all right and we had one extra card here that came out for um, the reading um, on your side. It says, discover your superpower. Access 100% of your mojo. Okay, wow, that's beautiful. So they're telling you really to tap it. You have some power that you haven't actually tapped into quite yet. It could also be tapping into, again, we have 33 on that card. So three is relevant somehow. Three, three, 33. It could be your age, your twin's age. It could be... Um, uh, like a, a number that's relevant between the two of you for some reason. But uh, yeah, they're talking about discovering your superpower here. Um, and let's see what that means here. And that's a master number as well. You are infinitely powerful, wise, strong, and blessed. Yet you've only taken, taken conscious ownership of about 5% of your natural inheritance. Without realizing it, most of your power has been relegated to your shadow cave. As a kid, you may have been shunned, teased, ostracized, or spanked for demonstrating certain behaviors or feelings. Okay, this is again that childhood thing that I was talking about. There's healing from childhood issues here for some of you, especially if that was the case, if somebody shamed you for the way you felt. Yeah, interesting. Consequently, you labeled those characteristics bad and deleted them from your playlist, but nothing is ever truly deleted. It's just disowned for a while and relegated to a cloud or cave. Eventually, these characteristics will break into dreams or enter our waking life at inopportune moments. At its core, every shadow is beautiful and useful. In fact, within your biggest, scariest shadow is your superpower in disguise. When anything that has been cut off escapes from your shadow cave, it will lunge forth with fangs if given the chance. Instead of trying to outrun it, quicken your transformation by standing still, yes, and exploring what is worthy and noble about these aspects of yourself. If you can't do this on your own, invite an ally to hold your hand as you discover the beauty and usefulness of your shadow. As you do this, you will find your shadow is no longer a shadow, but mojo that can now empower your quest. Yes, this is this advocate. This is someone that you are either helping stand by you in your shadow moment, or it may also be your twin that's standing next to you in your shadow moment, and they're still they're still trying to love you through it. They're still acknowledging that, yes, this was a part of who you are and it does bleed into your current life and it has to do with some unresolved issues from childhood. And it's helping you work through those as well. And uh, in exploring the darker parts of yourself that you may have been hiding away or holding back, um, but they keep resurfacing. So they may be resurfacing in this Ace of Swords where you give some harsh truth or harsh communication um, that um, in, in opinions and in ways that are not very kind uh, for some of you, not all of you, um, and that it's affected this connection because, um, and probably negatively, and other parts of your life. So it's going to keep resurfacing in your dreams. So if you still have, if you have a dream that repeats itself over and over and over again about the, about something to do with, like maybe you're really angry in the dream. Maybe you uh, lash out in your dream. It's very possible that that's because of some of these issues that have to be resolved in the 3D world. Um, you could see a counselor. Those are always uh, very healthy ways of dealing with these things with these uh, issues that we all have, we all struggle with. And um, again, I'm feeling like there's a lot of healing that has to be done um, because if not, they're going to keep resurfacing in your life and they're going to keep causing problems. They could just be burning stuff up 
um, unnecessarily to our burning connections or burning bridges, um, especially with that black and white thinking. So, all right, guys. Okay, let's do some clarifying here and see what we have. All right. First card that I'd like to clarify will do your mutual energy, which is the three of wands are first. Why is the three of wands are first? Okay. All right. So we have the three of wands reversed, clarified by death. Could Death card could be dealing with a Scorpio. And we have the Hierophant, which is Taurus. And we have Taurus here. Okay. So um, what I'm feeling for this card um, is that for some of you, you've, you're no longer waiting for your twin to return. And you put an end to the connection, uh, possibly because of spirituality or because you are married or they are married. So it's very possible because again, this is mutual energy. So one or both of you could be committed to someone else. Um, and it's possible that you're not waiting. You're not, you're not wondering if this person's going to come back, um, anymore, even though there's possibly this return here. It's always that idea that it's always a possibility that they might return. Um, to your life or you might return to theirs. It could be also a break in communication like you guys may not be communicating either This is also what I'm getting from this card right as of now um, What I'm also feeling is that for some of you it could have ended because of spirituality because of issues because of Someone needing to heal and someone needing to go within um, and to do some spiritual work So whether it's you or your twin or both that's very possible that that's what what happened here but again with um, death there is rebirth and I see the Hierophant as being someone who, um, you know, it is a, it's a Taurian energy um, that, um, that they may have ended things and stopped waiting because they need to do some work. They need to uh, go within as well. So um, it could also be because you were two different religions or two different backgrounds possibly. Um, or your spiritual, maybe something didn't meet in the middle with spirituality that was very important to you um, or your twin, and maybe that was a cause of this uh, destruction. I really do feel like it's possibly one or both of you, uh, for one of the messages, are committed um, and so to in another relationship, so that could exactly be why. It's also putting an end to waiting and going within spiritually, so... Um, and maybe it's putting an end to waiting and going towards this Taurus. That could be one of the energies for some of you, Virgo. Maybe you have decided to put an end to this waiting and that you're now going to pursue this Taurian, um, this Taurus, this hero, the Hierophant. So very possible. Okay, let's do some more clarifying here. All right, we have the Ace of Swords reversed. So there's some truth that you have to speak here. It is clarified by the Queen of Pentacles reversed and the Four of Pentacles. So there's some truth that you have to give to a uh, Taurus, Virgo, or Capricorn. It's um, Earth energy here, uh, possibly a mother uh, or a wife. Uh, could just it doesn't have to be. It could just be in a relationship um, or you or a friendship, but. Uh, the truth is, and it's hard to say this, I think it's, you feel it's hard to say this, but you no longer want to give to this, or you feel like this Queen of Pentacles is no longer giving to the relationship. So this Four of Pentacles, is they're holding back, they're not giving to this connection. I think we had something very similar to the last reading that we had here. But for a lot of you, that's exactly the, the issue, is that, um, and, and for some of you, you're not waiting for your twin to come back because you're in a commitment with possibly a Taurus or just committed um, or, or you've gone in a new direction to commit to someone else. So that may, that's just coming out. I'm sorry, but it's, there's lots of stuff going on here. Okay. So you may have to give some truth to this queen of pentacles or the truth is that, you know, they're not, they're not giving to this relationship anymore or they're not financially stable. It could also be the truth about um, the queen of pentacles um, that you're dealing with or that energy it could be male doesn't have to be female um, but I feel like for a lot of you Virgo that you have some truth to speak to this 
Queen of Pentacles, or they have some truth, it, or the truth of the situation is that they're not giving to this connection anymore. They have given up on this connection. I really feel like this is like a give up energy. It's like, well, we didn't have much to begin with, and but I've already given up, and that is the truth. Um, for some of you, you want to tell this Queen of Pentacles that you're giving up because they haven't put enough effort into this connection, or you don't want to put any more effort into this connection, and you want forgiveness. You want forgiveness for the truth that you have to speak to them. It could also be a divorce. Okay, so we have a seven of wands reversed. Okay. All right. We have the nine of swords. Okay, so seven of wands reversed, clarified by the nine of swords. So it feels like this still stresses you out. Like this nine of swords energy is, um, again, we have... Uh, energy of someone who's feeling very trapped or in fear or like a fear of rejection possibly but it's like it's almost like taking down this wall puts you into severe anxiety um or being able to speak your truth it could be the speaking your truth and like this communication that you have to give gives you so much anxiety that you're like up at night you're stressing and it's causing you severe uh mental um exhaustion as well as what I'm feeling for this card like mentally exhausted just like oh my gosh like I can't take much more of this and I eventually have to speak my truth or I eventually have to let this wall down that I put up and there's some type of truth that has to some type of communication that needs to take place or will take place uh, but it's causing you a lot of stress to have to think about it and you're no longer listening to the opinions of possibly if or you may be listening to the opinions of others but even so, that even may cause you more stress in this in this energy as well. So, interesting. All right. Why is the star reversed? Why is the star reversed? Ace of Pentacles. Okay. So I'm feeling that, again, kind of what I said here with this childhood issues and healing from this, it's an opportunity for you to heal. It's an opportunity of the Spirit's telling you to heal yourself, heal your situation, um, heal your relationships for some of you. It's an ability to start over um, once you can kind of address some of these issues and uh, see them for what they really are. Again, this person's flipped upside down, just like the flip, up, flip it upside down. Um, so she or he is kind of having to see things from a new perspective here and see healing from a new perspective and be willing to address some of these issues that are hidden in the dark here. We have the night sky and some of the wishes and some of the things it was talking about with childhood are very relevant for some of you. And so this is a new opportunity for you to do so. Spirit is giving you the opportunity to turn this upright and heal and to get your wishes granted. But you have, but you have to address them first. It's almost like you got to go into that dark side of yourself and realize that there's no light without the dark and vice versa. So it's accepting your shadow sides. All right, guys. Wow, that was interesting. Um, so your last card is your fortune card. This is awesome. Oh my, okay. We have unity. So a, div a time of divine understanding, renewal, peace, and hope. You radiate and attract great love. Yeah, it's very possible if this happens, you could become into union with your twin. I'm not overwhelmingly seeing that for some of you. However, it's not that it's not a possibility. It's also coming into unity with yourself. So whatever, whatever healing you do to, with you, within yourself will also help heal your twin. So I'm feeling like there's just a lot of um, energy here that talks about forgiveness um, and talks about really seeing things from a different perspective. Uh, and it's, it's really beautiful. And so if you can accomplish this for some of you, that's exactly where you'll be. So you can come into unity with yourself and you have... Um, it is a time of divine understanding and renewal with this star card. This is divine understanding. This is divine renewal. This is this is healing. Yeah, you radiate and attract great love. Yeah. 
So that's beautiful. So again, with some of this work that you do, it's very possible your twin will return. But I think until then, you have, there's a pause in order for some of this energy to be transmuted, in order for purification to take place um, as well. So it could be that you're trying to get out of a commitment as well um, in order to go towards your twin. So for, that's for some of you. That could very well be the case. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to do your twin's energy here in the next video. So stay tuned. And if I don't see you then, I will see you for your March videos. Take care.